I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I'm really struggling with something right now. Um, I don't know if you struggle with this too, but I just feel like there's something that I need to do, something that I should remember, and I just, I, I, I can't. You know, I just wish there was a way that, you know, when I think of something, I could write it down or record it in my phone so that later when I'm at a state like this, I could remember what that thing was. You know, I could, I mean, I can do that. You, you can do that. You know, there's this thing called Funkable that allows us to make apps that do things just like that. So, in today's tutorial, let's make an app that will allow us to record the things that we need to do. Alrighty, this is going to be a, another quick tutorial. So I've opened up a, a new project and I'm calling this project Brain Dump. So it's going to be a to-do app where you can brain dump everything you need to do and then manage those tasks inside of the app. So we'll call this Brain Dump. We'll go through the UI first, and then after that, we'll hit the block section. All right, so to kick this off, I will start off with a header row where I will add the title of the app so that the user can see that. Inside of this row, we'll go ahead and add a label. And then for the text of that label, we'll set it to brain dump. Let's set the font size to 24. The color of this will set to white. And then finally, we'll set the height to fit contents. Now, you can't see that because I set it to white. So let's go ahead and modify this row to what we want. For this, I'm going to set the height to 10%. And then we will set the background color to blue. So that gives you a Nice, uh, nice header row. Next item, we're going to add a list viewer. Now the list viewer is what we're going to use to actually see the items in our to-do list. And I think for, at least for now, we're going to leave this just as it is. So it's filling up the space. And the last thing we want to do is add another row at the very bottom. And we'll use some components inside of this row to actually add items to our list. Now inside of this row, we're going to add two things. So the first is a text input, and then we'll follow that with a button. So the idea is that the user will enter text into the text input, then add it with a button. Now there is one more thing that we actually will not add to the UI where the user actually sees it on the screen but they will see it eventually, and that is an alert notification. We'll use this alert whenever the user tries to delete an item. Yeah, there we go. So drag it on the screen, and you can see the alert here, and then that will eventually show to the user. So let's go ahead and format this while we're here. For the title of this, we'll say, um, are you sure? So are you sure you want to delete? And then we'll just say uh, this, item will be permanently deleted. Are you sure? Cool. So this is the message that will display inside of the alert. And now we need to set the messages for the uh, button. So the user should have two options. One is to cancel. So we'll say no for this. Are you sure? No, I don't want to delete the item or yes. Yes, I want to delete the item and we'll mark this as dangerous so that we're prompting the user not to do this because it's removed forever. And that should be about it on the alert. So one last thing to touch up here, and that is this uh, container here, this row component. So here we want to set the height to 20%. And then we're also gonna set the background color of this blue. And then we'll adjust the justification of this to space around to space out the input and the button. Now onto the input. So we are going to, let's see, we'll adjust our hint to say item to add. All of this will stay the same. Under the advanced tab, we're going to adjust some of the text style. We're going to give the color um, a white color. And then we're going to adjust just the font size, 
24 is a little big. Let's try 20. I think that should be good. Let's go ahead and add under style. Let's add a borderline on the bottom just to kind of help it pop a little bit. So bottom, we'll set to one. We'll set the bottom color to white. And then for our button, let's go ahead and adjust the text to add. We're going to leave the colors of the button the same. Let's increase the size a little bit to 20. And let's actually adjust the width. I want it to be a little bit wider. So I'm gonna, let's do use a percentage of 30%. All right, so I think that this is looking good in the UI. Let's go ahead and rename a few of these so that it's easier for us to block out in the end. So we've got the screen of brain dump, We'll leave the row and the label the same. We don't need those. This is going to be our to do, and we'll just do list underscore to do. And then for our text input, we'll say input to add. And then for button, we'll call this uh, button add. And finally, the alert, we'll call this alert underscore delete. All right, let's take a look at what this looks like inside of the Thunkable Live Test app. Alrighty, I think it's looking uh, pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and add some rounding on the corners of the button just to make that look a little bit better. And yeah, I think the rest of that's good for now. All right, so I think we're ready to move to the blocks tab where we'll actually make this app do things. All right, so I wanted to try something a little different. Instead of going through and adding all of these blocks, you know, with you on the screen, I thought I would just show you the blocks and then we can talk about what they do. So I'm not distracted by adding them and you can actually see what I'm doing as I'm talking about it. So to start off, we needed a variable to store the items in our list. Now I chose for this demo to just do an app variable, but if you wanted to store this while the app was closed, you could use another variable like a stored variable or you could even use a database. Um, just, just, just depends on how complex you wanted to get. So to start off, I have three items in the list just to kind of introduce the user to the app. Welcome to Brain Dump. Tap here to delete this item. And then the last uh, item in the list is or add a new item by entering it below. We'll see this in action a little bit later, but just know that our list variable has three items in it. Now the next item I wanted to create is a function that I could call, I'll need to call this a few times throughout the blocks. And all this does is it updates the list on the screen to match the list that's in the variable. So it takes whatever is stored in our variable and updates the list viewer inside of the UI. All right, so I have a variable and a function. Now next, I wanted to update the list whenever the screen starts. So whenever I open up the app, I wanna go ahead and pull the most recent list from that list variable and push it to the screen. So all I'm doing is calling that function I just talked about um, which just runs that one line of code where it refreshes the list viewer with the list I have stored. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like inside of the app. All right, so you, you can see here, and I'll actually, let's close out the app real quick and then open it back up so that you can see I'm not doing anything, but right when it opens up, I can see that there are now three items in the list viewer. So these are the ones that I defined in my variables and um, I didn't have to do anything. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna add the functionality to actually add items to this list and then remove items from the list when we click on them. So two more chunks of code to add. Let's do that now. Now, one thing I did notice while we were testing was that I left the arrows on in the list viewer. Since we're not actually going to another screen, I'm going to turn those arrows off so that um, it's just the, the text item. Now back to the blocks, the next block I'm going to add is a block to grab the text from the input field and then update the list variable with that item. So it's going to add a new item to the list variable and then call the update list. So let's do this line by line. So starting off, when our button is clicked, I wanna check before I do anything if there is something inside of the input field. So to do this, there's a, you know, there's a few different ways to do this. The way I chose to do this was I'm using a logic block and inside of this, I'm checking the length 
of our input field. So if the length of our input is greater than zero, that tells me that there's some text in there. So I don't wanna just add blank rows to my list. So what this does it's, is check to see that there's actually text in there. So if it is greater than zero, then in the list, I'm going to add an item and that item is whatever is in the input. So in my list variable, I'm going to add a new list item of whatever is in the input field. Then I'm going to call my function update list and that is going to update the actual UI of the app with the list variable. And then finally, I'm going to clear out whatever is in the input field. So I'm going to set the input field to blank just so that the user, if they want to add multiple items at a time, they can do that very quickly without having to delete whatever's in the input, input field. And then also just to note, if the length of input is equal to zero, it doesn't do anything. So let's see this block in action. So here I can go to item to add. Once I click on that, I can type in a new to do item. Let's say I, I need to finish this video and then I can add that. And then we can see a new item is added to the list. And the final block to discuss is what we will use to actually delete rows from the app. So from the list viewer, I'm, I grabbed a when list is clicked. So whenever an item in the list is clicked, then do something. So whenever an item in the list is clicked, I'm calling the alert show. So what this is going to do is show the alert inside of the app. And then once that is shown, that's going to present the user, do they want to delete or do they not? This is what we added on the design tab. And then I grabbed this was confirmed block here. So if the user confirms that they want to delete it, that's what this block does. It says if was confirmed, then I'm going to delete or remove that item from the list. So here I have the index block. And so what this is, this is from, I actually grab this from up here. So whatever item is clicked, we can either grab that item itself or the index of that item. So I grab the index and that index is just the number um, the number where that item falls in the list. So is it in the first position, the second position, so on. So remove item number, whatever item was clicked, remove that from the list variable. And then for a third time, I call that function update list. So whenever the user clicks an item, it's going to ask, do they want to delete it? If they confirm that, we're going to remove that from the variable list. And then we're going to update the UI to actually not show that list item anymore. All right, let's take a look at what that looks like inside of the app. Alrighty, here we go. So I still have that item in there before I need to finish this video. So I will go ahead and delete that item. Oh, okay. So I clicked on that item and it's going to prompt me. Are you sure? And then it says this item will be permanently deleted. Are you sure? So if I say no, it's not going to do anything. And so I can do that multiple times, no matter, you know, I can click on all of these. No, it's not going to delete it. But then if I click it and I say yes, it deletes it from the app. And then one thing I guess I did not show you is um, actually adding things that were blank. So here in the field, let's not add anything. If I click the add button, nothing is added. But then if I add something, it will add it to the list and then I can delete it. Hey there friend, if we haven't met, my name is Darren and I make these videos in hopes that they will help you make more awesome apps in Uncle. And the idea for this video actually came from the comments of another one of my videos. So if you have an idea for a video or you want to see me teach something, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And I'm making videos like this every week, so consider subscribing and thanks for watching.